let me begin by giving you three testimonies. A woman came for a retreat. She came to me. She looked very disturbed. She said to me, Father, you speak about peace and joy in families. But Father, there is absolutely no peace in our family. Almost every day there's a fight. And all the problems in the family are due to one person, my mother-in-law. This elderly woman, she would create problems every day. She would pick on everything that I do and find fault with me. And there's no peace at all in the family. Father, if there should be peace in our family, either my mother-in-law should change or she should die. There's no other way. A second testimony. When I visited a parish, a certain man came to me. I visited that parish in preparation for a retreat. This man came to me and said, Father, retreat will be of no use for this parish because the parish is divided. All because of one person, the chairperson of the parish council. He himself does not go to church often. And yet, he does all the organizing of every event in the parish. And his policies are very wrong. A lot of people oppose him. A parish priest is an elderly person. He does not understand much that happens in the parish. And this chairperson of the parish council has a lot of influence on our parish priest. The parish priest trusts him blindly. And the parish is divided. Nothing can be done unless this chairperson of the parish council is removed from that office. A third testimony. During our retreat over here, a certain man came to me he said, Father, there's a lot of problems in our neighborhood. All because of my immediate neighbor. He grabs land from others. I have a property attached to his property. Father, when he put his fence, he took a little land from my property. He intruded into my land. I told him not to do that. But he did it. I could not say anything. I felt very helpless. I have filed a case against him. The case has been going on for years. And there's no solution. Meanwhile, there's a problem in my family as well. My own brother is against me. My own brother thinks that 
this neighbor of mine has not intruded into our property. And unless this neighbor of mine changes, there will be no peace in our neighborhood, neither in our family. Now, my dear sisters and brothers, typical situations of our life, of our family life, of our neighborhoods, of our parishes. All of us want peace. All of us want joy. And none of us can tolerate the strain in the relationships. But unfortunately, there's always a problem. When there's a problem, what do I want? What do we want? We want a change in the other. If he changes, if she changes, there will be peace. And that is what we imagine, a change in the other. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, in the gospel, Jesus is telling something very different. This was the first proclamation of Jesus. After having been baptized in River Jordan, after having fasted and prayed for 30 days in the desert, Jesus began his public ministry. And he started the proclamation of the word. And the first proclamation was this. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. A message for God's kingdom to come into our lives. What is the kingdom of God? St. Paul tells us, Romans 14, 17, the kingdom of God is the righteousness, peace, and joy of the Holy Spirit. The righteousness and peace and joy of the Holy Spirit. And that's what all of us want. All of us want everything to be right in our relationship to God, in our relationship to each other. All of us want peace and joy in our families, in our parishes, in our neighborhoods. But then, for that peace and joy, for that kingdom of God to come into our lives, what are we to do? Jesus said, repent and believe in the gospel. What is repentance? Repentance is turning to God. A personal transformation in my life. I need to turn away from sin. I need to turn to God. I need to turn to God and make my life centered on God. Sin will distract us from God. I close my heart against God. I look to the things of this earth for the fulfillment of my life. I do not care for the commandments of my God. I do not care for the will of my God. I do not open my heart to God's love. I live just like a man of this world with the concerns of this earth. That's what sin is. And when there is sin in my heart, the one thing I need to do is to turn to God. When I turn to God, there will be peace and joy, and righteousness of God's kingdom. There's something very beautiful here. Every change should occur, should begin with me. With me, not in the other. I was speaking about the three people who came to me. All of them want the other to change. 
All of them want peace. One wants peace and joy in the family. The other wants peace in the parish. The third one wants peace in the neighborhood. But their solution is change must begin with the other. The first one wants the change to begin with the mother-in-law. If the mother-in-law changes, everything will be perfect. <laughs> the other one wants change in the chairman of the parish council. If he changes, the whole parish will be transformed according to him. The third one wants a change in the neighbor. If the neighbor changes, there will be peace in the neighborhood and in his family. And this is a very common approach. All the problems are with the other. And when there's a change in the other, the effect will be in my life as well. That's what all of us want. In fact, there are ideologies that go with the same method the Marxist ideology wants the bourgeois to be eliminated. When the bourgeois class is eliminated, there will be a paradise for the proletariat, for the working class. For the salvation of the working class, the bourgeois class must be eliminated. When the other changes, there will be paradise in my life. And there are political parties. In a democratic system, the opposition will always be finding fault with the ruling party. If the ruling party changes, there will be a transformation in the country. And the opposition party wants the ruling party always to change. And this is a way of thinking. Systems and structures should change. And then I will be okay. I will be in paradise. The teaching of Jesus is the opposite. The one to change is me. Change must begin with me. I must open my heart to my God. All the problems are due to this. My heart is closed against God. When I open my heart to my God, I invite God's kingdom into my heart, into my life. God is able to work on me. God is able to transform me. And God is able to make me an agent of the kingdom of God. And God will send me to change others. I will be able to be a worthy instrument in the hands of God. And God will use me to bring about a transformation, a kingdom of God around me, in my family, in my neighborhood, in my parish. And that's what I told these three people, the woman who came for retreat, I asked her, my sister, when did you talk to your mother-in-law last? She said, Father, I never talked to her. In fact, she had commanded me, don't talk to me anymore. I don't want to talk to her. And I don't want to have anything to do with her. I told her, my sister, that is wrong. Your heart is closed against your mother-in-law. Since your heart is closed against your mother-in-law, you should know your heart is closed against God. Even God cannot bless you because you are in sin, hating your mother-in-law. I told her, pray for your mother-in-law. And meet me at the end of the retreat. The one person you must be praying for all through this retreat is your mother-in-law. That God may bless her 
that God may give her long life and good health. Pray for your mother-in-law. And she did. At the end of the retreat, she came to me. She said to me, Father, I have been praying for my mother-in-law. And I can feel, Father, I can feel for her, an elderly woman. She's having a lot of arthritic pain. She can't walk. I was all the time against her, and therefore I was not able to do anything for her. I told her, now go back and be good to her. And she decided. She went back. She went back home. A week after, it was the birthday of the mother-in-law. And she never celebrated her birthday. And this daughter-in-law, she decided to celebrate that birthday. She baked a cake. She took a flower and went to the mother-in-law and sang happy birthday. The mother-in-law was totally surprised. She least expected that would happen, that her own daughter-in-law, whom she hated, would do this. And at the end of the greeting, the mother-in-law hugged her, and the two of them wept. They asked pardon from each other, and there was a lot of change in that family. They began to pray together earlier. The mother-in-law would never join the family prayer. Now the mother-in-law also joined the family prayer, and the son, the husband of this lady, was the happiest man because of all the changes. There was peace in that family. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, all the time we blame the other. As long as we blame the other, the devil is right there. And the devil is there to destroy us. The moment I stop blaming, the moment I change my heart, the moment I open my heart to my God, God is able to use me as an agent of the kingdom of God. It's exactly what happened in the next case as well. This man, I invited him for the whole retreat. I told him to take part in the parish retreat, and he took part. At the end of the parish retreat, I asked him, when is the next parish council? He said, the next parish council meeting was a month after. I told him, my friend, I suggest, and this is from God, I suggest every morning you come for the Holy Mass and pray, and pray for the chairman of the parish council, pray for the parish priest, and pray for all the members of the parish council. Pray for one intention, that the whole parish administrative body should come for a retreat to Divine Retreat Center. And this man prayed. With a lot of faith in his heart, he prayed. And I told him, Whenever you meet them, be good to them. You exchange a greeting and be good to them and let, the, let everybody know that you are for them. At the end of the one month, there was the parish council meeting and something beautiful happened. This person, he suggested in the parish council meeting that after the parish retreat. All the administrative body should go for a retreat because during the parish retreat, all the members of the parish council were busy organizing their retreat. They could not make a retreat. And he suggested that all of us, including the chairman, we should go for a retreat in the Divine Retreat Center. And they suggested this to the parish priest. The parish priest also joined the parish council members that came here for a retreat. They talked to each other, and there was 
a great transformation in that parish council and in that parish. You know, my dear sisters and brothers, change must begin not with systems and structures. It's good for us to know systems and structures don't change. What changes is the heart. That's where God works. When God works in my heart, I allow God to work in my heart, I'm able to become an agent. God will use me, an agent, to go and become an agent of the kingdom of God. Let me tell you what happened to the third person. He made the retreat. And at the end of the retreat, I told him, my friend, how much your neighbor has encroached. He said, Father, a little. But then Father is so proud, he's so arrogant. He did that, he would never accept it. He would never admit it. I told him, why don't you go and tell him? My friend, I am withdrawing the case. I told him, God is a great blessing waiting for you. And if you do that, God will bless you. Because for years, you don't talk to each other. It's a problem in your own family. You open your heart. What you lose is a little. If I told you, lose it. It's only a little. What you're going to gain is the blessing of God. He prayed over that during the retreat. And God gave him the grace to open his heart to his neighbor. After the retreat, he straight went and told the neighbor, my friend, I'm withdrawing the case. I'm sorry. I did not talk to you for a long time. I'm coming from a retreat. My God has given me the grace to do this. We are the best of friends from now on. The neighbor was very surprised. But then uh, he took that offer from him and the case was withdrawn. Something beautiful happened two months after that. The son of this man met with a very serious accident. And the young man was taken to the hospital. And the doctor said an urgent surgery was to be done. And that would cost a lot of money. In fact, this neighbor of his, they had become friends. He also had taken, was there to take the young man to the hospital. And this man told his neighbor, my friend, I have no money at all. I have no money at all uh, to give to the hospital. The neighbor said, don't worry. I have money in the, in the bank. I will go and bring the money. And the neighbor brought the money. And the money was given to the hospital. The operation was done. The neighbor told him, you give the money back only when you have it. Don't worry about it. Your son is like my son to me. And therefore, don't worry. Well, the young man was operated and everything was well. And he told his neighbor, my friend, the father had told me that God is a great blessing waiting for me. I never knew that blessing would come in this manner. The two families were so united, they became the best of friends. You know, my dear sisters and brothers, only when we open our hearts to the Lord in repentance, only then God is able to use us as agents of the kingdom to usher in God's kingdom into our lives, into our neighborhood, into a parish, into the whole world. That's why after Jesus proclaimed the good news, this is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. After Jesus announced this good news of the kingdom of God, what Jesus did immediately was 
to call disciples. As we heard in the gospel, Jesus called Simon Peter and his brother Andrew. Jesus called James and his brother John. And what Jesus said to Simon Peter is so pertinent. Jesus said, I will make you fishers of men. That's what Jesus called the apostles for, to make them fishers of men. A fisher catching men for the kingdom of God. And that means agents of the kingdom to usher in God's kingdom in the lives of others. And you and I, God counts on us, my dear brothers and sisters, God counts on us to go and proclaim the good news of the kingdom. It's not mere proclamation. Before I proclaim, I must be ready to experience God's kingdom in my own heart, in my own life, by repentance, turning to God, and I will be ready for God to use me as the successors of the apostles. The 12 apostles went about preaching. And they established the kingdom of God on this earth. And that mission should continue to the ends of the earth, to the end of the world today. You and I, we are given the message. The Lord is saying the time, this is the time of fulfillment. Repent. Believe in the gospel this time. There could be a problem in your family, my brother, my sister. There could be a problem in the neighborhood. There could be a problem in your parish, in your workplace. There could be a problem in the whole world at large. And there should be a transformation. All of us want a transformation. All of us want the kingdom of God to come into our lives. But let it begin with me. Let it begin with me. I turn to my God. I open my heart to my God for God's word, for God's peace and joy to fill my heart. And I will be a worthy instrument in the hands of God to usher in God's kingdom. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this great message of hope. This world is fast slipping into despair. Everything looks like becoming worse and worse. Lord, here I am. With prophet Isaiah, I want to tell you, here I am. Send me, O oh God. But before I go, as an agent of the kingdom, let my heart be totally turned to you. Let my heart be filled with the peace and joy of the Holy Spirit. Amen.